<laughs> Hi, Christine Renee here. I am offering a presentation live in Bozeman, Montana on metaphysical anatomy and physiology and really coming back to the root of why we have physical manifestations of disease, of ailments, of illnesses, and going to that underlying emotional connection there. And so today we're going to go over, do a review of the chakras and really look at each one of them and going, okay, where's my root cause? And if it is something physical in your body, what's that emotional flavor for it? And at the end, we'll have time for questions. So um, I believe I'm broadcasting to Facebook and on YouTube. So if you have questions, jump over to the Crowdcast so that I you can enter your questions on the chat. And we're just going to dive right in. So um, who knows what chakras are? Like chakras are, um, they are from a yogi tra tradition. And it's a Sanskrit word that goes, um, that translates as a wheel. And so we have these energy wheels through our body. And they should easily flow from one chakra to the next. Or flow up, flow down, either way. And when we have blockages, that energy gets stuck. When we have stress in our life, we get an accumulation of tension, accumulation of energy that's not flowing properly. And when we have that accumulation, we'll have emotional effects and physical effects, as well as spiritual effects, depending on where you're, you're at in the chakra line. And so I believe that the chakras are like a map to healing. So if you have this wonderful map that tells you, okay, if I have a, a hurt knee, what does that reflect going on in my life? And what is that supposed to be trying to communicate to me? And so the chakras are a really great way to going, okay, I, if I understand the chakras and I understand the emotional connection, I can look at the physical connection too. And so this is, um, I love it. I started exploring the chakras when I all had my own personal health crisis. So about, I think it's more like four years ago now, I was, um, I had a toddler who was keeping me up all night. She woke up every two hours. She, um, at least two hours, like just very touchy all throughout the night and called a sleep coach and a panic one night going, I need help now, or I'm going to strangle her, I'm going to do something, because I was so sleep deprived, and my brain wasn't working, and on top of that, I was a student midwife trying to go to four births a month, and so that was compounding the issue, and then I have um, an ex-husband who can be very triggering, very stressful. I had been doing a lot of my healing work around the divorce, but I hadn't got to the root issue. And the root issues was boundaries. How do I have boundaries with someone who has been traditionally abusive in my life? Um, and learning how to do that. And um, he's alcoholic, um, narcissist, borderline, you know, just a real toxic relationship when you look at it from the outside. Also, from now my perspective, biggest teacher in my life. I called this person into my life so that I could learn a huge ma major lesson so I could stand here today or sit here today <laughs> and say, I'm an empowered woman who is very clear in what I want and no one's going to stop me. And this is my message. And I am hoping to reach as many people as possible so that they can learn how to heal themselves. Right? So this is my, this is my jive for sure. But in, in that struggle, I, um, the police were getting called all the time and for silly things like my son not having soccer shorts, soccer pants. He was eight. No one cares. Um, and the, the police were kind of playing into it. And so that was really difficult for me to come to a place of um, constant harassment on my phone, constant harassment um, using my son as a pawn and me trying to be strong mama bear to protect him. And so I was constantly going there. And at the time I have a, a wonderful husband now, a beautiful daughter, but they're trying to figure out how to support me. And really it came back to me. And so I, 
um, came to a really dark place that my rock bottom and I, my anxiety was out of control. I was suicidal and life was not good. Life was not good. And I had a major wake up call. I was sitting in the rain and the rain was pouring on me and I was crying in the yard and it doesn't rain in Bozeman. <laughs> like it rarely <laughs> ever rains, but on this day it was raining and the police were called again for nothing and constantly having to um, have this repeat situation going on with my, my ex-husband. And I just was in despair. You know, I wasn't depressed. I was in despair, which is a more of a flavor of anxiety. I didn't see an, a way out. I didn't see how anything could change. And, um, you know, finances weren't great. I was trying to figure out how could I make money with this crying toddler with my midwifery school and all of these things. And it just was too much. And um, I came out of that day um, on medication and quitting my job on the spot and saying, I'm changing my lifestyle now. I am going to change every aspect of my life. I knew that I needed to change my life and the way I perceived life. I just didn't know how to do it. And so I told myself that if it wasn't Reiki and it wasn't meditation, I wasn't going to do it. That was just it. I, and that was, um, I believe, October of like 2014 or 15. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was, um, it, I was a day to remember because it was so clear. It's like, and I had to give up custody of my son. I gave up custody of my son for six months to an un, unhealthy man um, because I had to choose me first. And so it came back to who's most important. I can't provide for my child. I can't be a support to my family unless I heal me, unless I heal me first. And so I had to make this choice to set everything else aside so that I could work on me. And I had the tools. I had been a Reiki master since 2004. I knew about meditation, but I wasn't practicing. I wasn't practicing. I wasn't practicing the tools that I had. And I was surrounded with a community that of healers. And so it, I need to take care of myself, quit the job, quit um, on my son temporarily, which was really hard. But I knew if I didn't do that, I would find myself in the same exact position. So I totally went within and started doing my daily Reiki practice, which helps heal and balance, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Reiki knows where it needs to go. And the word Reiki can be broken down to Rei and Ki. And you hear Ki all the time. Ki is life force energy. You hear in Qigong, Tai Chi, that Qi and Ki are the same, it's life force energy. But the Rei is what makes Reiki super special. Um, Rei translates as divine consciousness or spiritually guided. So the divine consciousness knows where the life force energy is needed. It knows where in the body it needs to go. It knows where, um, where the blocks are and what needs to shift. And it's here to support your healing holistically. If it's for your highest good and the highest good of all. And so I came to that place where it was like, okay, it's time to start meditation. It's time for my daily Reiki practice and start stepping into the life that I knew I was meant to have. And that was as healer and teacher. And I've been putting it on the back burner. Well, it's not going to make enough money, so I can't do it. And I don't have the contents. Well, what I didn't have was confidence. <laughs> I didn't have the self-esteem and I had too much drama in my life to be able to successfully look at it. And so when I started on my healing journey, I started studying the chakras and I learned that they had this immense capacity to read the body from an emotional level and physical level. And everything I looked at from the physical point had an underlying emotional cause. So soon after my um, day of despair, my you know dark, dark day, my shadow day, I ended up getting diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is a autoimmune disorder. And it is where you get ulcers throughout the colon. And when I was really sick, um, I actually stayed awake for my colonoscopy and I could see 
uh, ulcer, 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 ulcer. Like they were spread throughout. And so they couldn't tell right away if I had ulcerative colitis and Crohn's or just ulcerative colitis because this is one of the worst cases that the doctor had seen. And yet it was another wake up call. It was like, how far down can we go to say, yes, I'm ready for healing. And I think I might, now that I think about it, I think I might have got that diagnosis six months before my day of despair around that time frame. So I had physical health issues that were coming to surface. And when you look at the chakras and go, okay, what is the connection to ulcers? What's the connection to colon? What's the connection to all the migraines I was getting? And the colon, here, here's the colon. And it says, what are you ready to let go of? What are you ready to release? Right? What? Because if you're holding on, you're going to get constipated. If you're releasing too fast and you're not taking in nutrition, you're just letting life move past you too quickly. And so my ulcerative colitis was one of the 10% that showed up as constipation. So I was getting impacted colons. So I was holding on so tight. I was gripping on to my son so, so tight. I couldn't let it go. And ulcers clearly are. Um, expressions of anger. And so I was so angry. I was so angry at the situation. I was angry at my, at my ex. I was angry at me for like being manipulated for so many years. Like I just had so much anger and I had not nowhere, nowhere for it to go. And so with this holding on and the ulcers with anger, it was just my colon just stopped working. It literally stopped functioning. And, um, and so that was part of my wake up call as well. And so once again, I kept, I started going, okay, turn to me, where does my hands need to go for my Reiki self healing? And what, what's the underlying emotional component to all of these things? How can I start to work on my self care, my self love, my self compassion, my self forgiveness for everything that had happened and start healing me first so that I could then overflow in abundance to the people around me. And so I want today to go over the chakras um, because I feel like if you can even hear just a tidbit, then you'll understand, okay, that's where my root cause is. Let's focus there. Okay. Does that make sense? So I'm like, maybe I need to lift this up for a second. So I made this chakra diagram on a pyramid. And so you can kind of see this triangle because it reflects how the root chakra, this one at the bottom, is our foundation. So our root chakra is what's telling us to feel solid, feel grounded, feel secure, having all of your needs met. So I feel financially secure. I feel that I have the basic necessities of life that I need, a roof over my head, food on my table, and security, security, all kinds of financial security, that's your root. And if you don't have your root solid, you're going to start feeling anxious. So even if you're traveling and you're flying, or if, you, um, if you're moving houses or even moving offices, do you know how you get this little anxiety? Because you're uprooting yourself and your root is your base. And so um, when you have root chakra issues, it might manifest in feet problems, knee problems, hip problems, um, tailbone, you know, sacral bone issues, all of these root, because our root is located at the perineum, but really pubic bone and down. So anything uh, below that pubic bone might show up as a root chakra physical manifestation. And so people who um, let's say break their leg or sprain their ankle. What is that supposed to be trying to tell us from an emotional perspective? So when we break a bone, oftentimes the root chakra is also our past. Our past is our foundation, where we come from, what history do we have? And so what I see is the farther down in your body, the farther in the past you have suppressed your emotions. So this is like, my mother died 10 years ago, and I still have ankle issues on my left foot. Left is feminine, right is masculine. So if you're having left ankle issues, it's like, who, what prominent female in your life do you still have emotional issues with? 
Were you abused as a child? And that was 40 years ago. Do you have, um, wh where is that trauma at? And so when you're on a ladder and you fall and you break your leg, it's going to go to the weak link. So the weak link is where in the body had the accumulated stress. So you could have easily broken your right, but you didn't. You broke your left because that's where the trauma was. Does that make sense? So we look at left versus right, and we go where in the past. And so another example is I had a, well, actually, this is a sacral chakra example. So I'm going to move on to sacral chakra. Sacral chakra is located at your pubic bone to belly button, your navel. And so this is the space of creativity, of manifestation, your reproductive system. You know, so physically, it's where we reproduce, where we make babies, right? And on the emotional side, it's where you're creative, you're artistic, your, um, your joy, your pleasure, your sensuality. It's all in this pelvic bowl. And what's where does that come from? It comes from our childhood. And so when we have really, um, you know, like everyone has childhood wounding, but when we have a childhood that's supported with play and with joy, um, this kind of continues. You're more easily to express yourself and feel emotionally valid for what you're feeling inside. And so this is our joy. If you can be spontaneous, uh, spontaneous, Spontaneous. Oh my goodness, that took a little bit to get out. If you can be spontaneously joyful, that's sacral chakra. But when you hold yourself back from being artistic, of being expressive in an artistic way, it doesn't matter if it's dancing, cooking, um, anything that you are artistically displaying yourself. So it can that can show up in a lot of different ways. But finding that craft project that you like. So if it could be scrapbooking to clay pottery to to um, a specific type of dance, all of those are gonna relate to your sacral chakra, as well as your sexuality and um, whether or not you can orgasm or not, or how pleasurable you receive the sexual acts. And that's where a lot of the trauma comes from. It can be from that sacral area of, um, I've been traumatized on a sexual level or in your childhood. So childhood wounding, the wounded child, as I like to call it, and many counselors refer to the wounded child. We all have a wounded child. No matter how beautiful our childhood was, we all at some point feel that we didn't receive enough love, didn't receive enough care, that we have abandonment issues in some kind. And that's where it all sits. And so the example I was going to give with the hips was I had a client who came in with um, severe hip pain. He was a uh, mason, he looked like a bodybuilder, you know, 25 years old, really young. And he um, he thought about, I guess it is root chakra too, it's a little bit of both. Um, and you can find that too, where they kind of meet, it's not in either uh, one specific chakra, but it's kind of in between. Um, so he, was a stonemason and he normally worked, you know, a typical eight hour day and he could barely move. And so he came in and I'm, I'm working on his hip, giving it, offering it Reiki. And I was inspired to talk to him about his past. And so the first question I asked was, were you by chance an army brat and moved around a lot? That's root chakra, moved around a lot. And he's like, yeah, how would you know? I was born in Germany and we moved like three or four times by the time I was 12. And while he was telling me that, his whole muscle, you could feel it go and it shifted and it released. And then since it was his left hip, I started talking to him about his, um, why it showed up then. So he's, he was telling me this was an old football injury from when he was like 15. And I'm like, there, there's, but why now? Why not every day? Why not? Why is this the time that it's coming up? And so I'm knowing it's left side. He had three daughters under the age of five and a wife that he was having marital issues with. And so I'm holding his hip. And so we, I started asking him, and this is, you know, maybe kind of being forward. And because he was the type of person that needed forwardness, even though 
it probably made him slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> so I said, hey, after a long work day, you come home to a messy house with three basically toddlers. How do you feel about that? Are you, do you, are you wanting just to sit on the couch and watch your football game and have a beer? Because you've had a long, hard, physically straining day. And he's like, well, yeah, I do. I go, when you are having marital issues in your life, does this seem to flare up more often? Because you need an excuse to take a break. I was like, maybe. <laughs> so I not only revealed the underlying root cause of the problem being that he traveled too much. It was affecting his root chakra and was able to bring some love and light energy into that space. But then we also going, why is it being triggered now? It's because he has, um, he always have currently having struggle in his relationship with the females in his life. And he didn't have a good example of what it was to be a father. And so it was here. And so he wasn't able to be creative or um, honoring of the women in his life, his children being, being supportive of them. It was just, I need to sit down and take a break, but he didn't know how to do that without being a, you know, a, a, a lazy father or something. And so all of those emotions weren't feeling validated. And that's really what comes to sacral chakra is that your emotions feel valid, whatever they are. And so it caused um, some physical health issues in his head, the, fl the flare to come out. And I haven't heard from him in three years. So I'm assuming that that got to the root cause and um, some awareness of how the physical situation, uh, the current situation was affecting his physical health. So the, that's your, you know, your root chakra, your sacral chakra, it can manifest in a lot of different ways. For women, it's usually reproductive issues as well as men. If they're having erectile dysfunction or um, prostate issues, that goes back to sacral chakra. For women, it's more like endometriosis, PMS, um, period problems, because our sacral chakra resonates with fluid, how fluid it is our bodies. And that fluidity um, expresses in our blood. And so how well are, do our periods flow? And so that's really interesting. And, um, and so we have this space that's asking to be honored, our emotions to be honored, and being able to be creatively expressive, right? So when we move to the solar plexus area, this is the navel to the end of the breastbone. So it's right here with all of these vital organs here. And so we have uh, kidneys on the back. Kidneys are also very um, coordinated with the sacral chakra because they're, they regulate your urine, which is fluid. So you have your kidneys on the back kind of in that sacral solar plexus area. And then you move over here and you've got your liver. Liver is huge. If you have chronic anger in your body, it's going to settle in your liver. And you're, so this is like for me personally, why I was getting so many migraines during this time is that I had so much anger in my life that it had settled in my liver and I couldn't detoxify my body in a healthy way. And so I'd be triggered for a migraine. And so you have your liver here and your gallbladder is underneath that. And then you have stomach and you have pancreas and spleen and then um, and so and then your colon is just right beneath that kind of in that sacral solar plexus area and so how well do we digest life is kind of what the solar plexus asks us how well are you regulating your blood sugar how well are you tapping into your immune system and that spleen how well are you able to um, honor your anger and release it. And so all of those organs, um, if you're having any issues here, then it comes back to solar plexus. And solar plexus is all about understanding exactly who you are and who you are not. And so this is uh, your self-love, your self-care, your self-esteem, your um, being able to be really present in your body and saying, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. And I'm not going to let somebody walk on me. No one's going to push me around. This is where my confidence comes from. And so if you find yourself getting 
pushed around, it's because you're not clear on who you are. When I'm clear on who I am, then it's, no, I'm not going to put up with your whatever it is. Or I'm very clear on what I want, what I need, and I can stand in that truth. And so this is, you know, me coming to a place of, I know my life purpose is to be healer, to be teacher, and I wasn't acting on it. And I always had an excuse of why not to step into that space. And as soon as I can step into that space, well, guess what? The boundaries follow because boundaries, that's might be more in the heart chakra, but boundaries is a very clear act of self-love. I'm not willing to do this. Or yes, I'm willing to do this. This is in alignment with me. And so coming here to this place, you kind of evaluate your negative self-talk. Who is that negative self-talk? Is this coming from my past, from my sacral chakra, where I was traumatized and I have this negative voice in my head? Was that an, a parent or a grandparent in my life? Or is this negative self-talk from our culture? You know, how many magazines do we have that says, you're not beautiful enough, you're not good enough, you need this product and this outfit and this and this and this. And it's like, I'm not being true to who I am. I don't need all of those things. That's what the industry, the beauty industry is telling me that I need. And I, I'm beautiful from within. I know who I am. And if I can stand in that confidence, no one can tell me otherwise. <laughs> and so it's very clear. And so this solar plexus area can swing two different ways. It can swing to low self-esteem and not feeling good about yourself. And then it can swing the other direction and be very narcissist, being I'm the center of attention, I'm, everyone needs to look at me and I'm the best person in the world. And so it's, it's this finding the balance of where they're nurtured going, I'm confident and I don't need to judge myself or others for their actions. I can see reality as it is and I'm comfortable in my own skin and what I want, what I need. And when you can be in that place, you don't care if the other girl is, you know, wearing a ton of makeup and doing whatever with her kids, because it's not your business. It's, it just comes to not my circus, not my monkeys. I don't need to get involved in that. And I don't need to get involved in that. Like it's all about being centered for me. I'm here. And so solar plexus, when you are finding yourself having the digestion issues or the stomach issues or liver issues or whatever issues it is, it's asking you to go, who are you? What do you stand for? And how are you letting other people manipulate that? How are they pushing you around? And how can I get clearer so that my message can be clear and stand in that confidence? And so then we move up to the heart chakra. And the heart chakra is the center. You have three chakras below, three chakras above. And this is where life happens. This space is about receiving love and giving love. So your left is your feminine receiving love, receiving care, asking for help. And your right side is about giving love, supporting your community, and um, is more of a masculine energy. And so how is this flowing? Where is it in balance? And this is expressing um, just being in communion with others. So when we have a really clear heart space, you're, you're standing on this confidence from below, knowing who you are, and then being able to ask for help when you need it, and being able to say yes to others who need help. So there's this balance. I receive love, and I give love, and I'm worthy of love. And, and so there's this lovely balance here. But when the heart chakra is off balance, the lungs can hold grief. So chronic grief will settle in the lungs. I often have people call me with pneumonia and the underlying cause every time is that they're grieving. Some part of their life is grieving. Um, heart issues, so whether that's uh, blood pressure or cholesterol or arrhythmias in the heart can be this. And then oftentimes I see it in the shoulders and the hands and the elbows and the, the arms. These are all expressions of what our life is. And so... Um, but for the neck, because I feel like this is where most people get the tension, right? This is where we hold the weight of the world. And so this is really between the heart and the throat chakra. And so the throat chakra says, 
How can I express my needs, desires, and wants? And being able to take the confidence from your solar plexus, move it through your heart with compassion, and be able to express yourself. This is what I need. This is what I want. This is what I desire from life. And when this gets closed up, it manifests in your shoulders because you're not telling someone in your life what your needs are, what your what your wants are. And so female issues are going to uh, manifest on the left. Prominent current relationship females is typically left, whereas prominent male figures in your life are going to show up in your right. So I typically would always have a kink in my neck. Like I had a yoga injury, like I would say six years ago from doing mountain pose. Mountain pose. I mean, this is putting my arms in the air and I ripped something in my neck. I could hear it. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> but I had such a powerful accumulation of stress and a weak link that my body couldn't even put the, my hand in there without this something ripping. So I got an old yoga injury, which is not even yoga. I was putting my hands in the air. It was pretty sad is what it was. And so, um, but it was because I couldn't communicate effectively to my ex-husband. No matter what I said, it didn't do anything. And so my when I get migraines, it runs up the, my neck and into my head. But it always starts down here because I couldn't communicate. And I couldn't have clear boundaries, right? And so um, when you have anything going on in the neck and the shoulders, this is going asking you, who do you need to communicate with? And what, where's the hesitancy? Why, why are you holding yourself back? And so it will be in here. Whereas the throat chakra is kind of two-sided. The throat chakra, we're moving up this pyramid. Woo! We're moving up the pyramid of your basic need. So at throat chakra, it's, it's two parts. We have this need to express, and then we have this needing to listen, deeply listening to those around us. Because so many people have such a hard time listening deeply to what you, the needs and the wants and the desires of those around us. And so I find that people who have really strong blocks in their ears, they're going deaf. They're having sinus issues. They're having, um, you know, this, this stuff is really, um, it can be really difficult and it can get up into your occiput so you get headaches here and the back and in the front. And so any, any of the sinuses and the headaches, it can be right in here. Um, as well as being able to focus and pay attention. And oftentimes I find when you have someone who can't truly listen on a deep layer level, it's, and their mouth runs constantly, it's it's that they're trying to um, they're running their mouth so that they don't have to listen. So if they keep talking, they don't have to listen. They're not letting an opening to listen because they don't want to be in the reality of life. So if their current situation is really difficult, they don't want and they don't want to recognize it. They'll just keep talking so that they don't have to listen. And so the throat chakra is very two-sided. And so it's, um, are you able to do both? Are you, are you clear? Can you express yourself and can you listen? And so that's um, very interesting. So if you're having any kind of throat issues, ear issues, that's typically where they would manifest, as well as teeth and jaw. Like if you are grinding your teeth at night, TMJ, um, chronic teeth issues, um, gum issues, herpes around the mouth, acne here, that's like anger about what you're not able to express. Um, so I'll find people who have acne just on one side, it's like, well, that's because you're angry and you can't express it to that male or female if it's the left, right? So they'll get certain things that will show up, like the acne that's right on the lip. Oh, you're biting your lip. What are you holding back? <laughs> so it's, it's very interesting for me to watch people, how, how it displays for different people like um, anger might very well show up on the skin and this acne um, and you can even go to any massage therapist and they'll they'll affirm that the the pimple on the back will show up right over this 
the state, the chakra that is having the issue. So it's very interesting. And it, and there's this little flavor of anger to it. And so um, that's, that's very interesting. Um, and then we move up once again. And so it's like when all of our root sacral solar plexus, when all these are healed, you're able to do more of the work of third eye and crown. And the third eye um, is here right in the center of our forehead, right between and above the brow. And it is where we can tune into our spiritual gifts and our intuition. And so it says, trust your gut. Trust, trust that you have a spiritual support system, whether you realize it or not. You have the, and, and it, it's across the different religions. Like I, I really don't feel like this information that I present is exclusive to one religion. And so it, you can apply it to whatever religion you're, that you believe in or spirituality that you practice. So whether that's um, guardian angels, spirit guides, uh, power animals, totem animals, or that you don't have religion, but what you can tune into is your higher, grandest version of yourself. And so I feel like that's the easiest way to connect here is if you can tune into the grandest and highest version of yourself, what would they be doing? How would they speak? How would they stand in their truth? And knowing that that presence of intuition is being guided from that place your higher self. And so tuning into that. And so this um, sixth sense place, this is your empathetic, like you can feel into others, people's emotions. There's lots of different spiritual gifts and they all look a little bit different, whether you're clairvoyant and can see beyond, whether you're clairaudient and hear messages come through, that can show up in a lot of different ways. And so if you're interested in that, let me know and we can get you more information specifically on, on heightening your awareness because the third eye is about perception, perception of your current reality, perception of um, who people are in your life, perception of where your energy is. Like this is about perceiving. And so are we perceiving the world with blinders on? Are we perceiving the world with rose colored glasses? How are you perceiving life? And the way it would manifest is it can be very ADD, ADHD, the learning disorders, not being able to focus. Because if your perception is way big, it's going to be really hard to focus on the, the narrow and nitty gritty things. And so this is about balance. You can have it be really wide open and now I'm seeing everything. And it can be too closed down where you're, you're tunnel vision and you're not open minded. And so and everything is black and white. And so it's about where are you comfortable being open and closed? And so then we move up to the crown chakra and this is, it's a beautiful place to be, but it needs to be in balance with the rest. So crown chakra is um, tunes into the universal source. This is your bigger purpose in life. This is your understanding that we are all one, that separation is an illusion and being able to be in this um, crown chakra space can be very out of body. It can be um, really ungrounding. And so a lot of times, like, for example, when I started learning Reiki so many years ago, I loved being in this third eye crown chakra space. But because I wasn't rooted at the bottom of the, of the chart here, I couldn't keep time. I was always late. I would forget to eat. I forgot that I had a body. <laughs> you know, that's crown chakra. Like, um, that your night and daytime is really off. Uh, so if you're someone who likes to be up all night and sleep all day, there could be something going on here with that internal clock. Um, and, but at the same time, this is a great place to meditate, to feel connected to universal source, see the bigger picture in your life. And so when you can go, here's my inspiration from the divine, here's my idea, and I bring it down into my third eye, and I start visualizing what that idea can mean. And then I start voicing it, seeing how, how that idea presents. And I've got to talk it out a little bit. And then I bring it down to my heart and I start going, hey, can you help me with this project? I have this idea. And I want to receive some input. I receive some help. And start going, okay, 
this can, this can, might be able to happen. I've got some support. And then kind of stepping into your confidence and going, this is in alignment with who I am. So I'm bringing that information from the divine and bringing it into fruition. And then we move it down to sacral chakra, which is the manifestation. So I'm creating, I'm creating that idea into manifestation and then we're rooting it into reality. It is now it exists. Does that make sense? So the energy can flow up and it can flow back down. And when they're all in, in flow and they're all balanced, this can happen very naturally. I'm taking divine inspiration and bringing it and rooting it into reality. When, or the other way is I'm bringing this energy from the earth, this really grounded energy, and being able to flow all of that energy upwards so that I can be here in this space and feel really in my body at the same time and really centered and grounded. Do you have questions? I'm probably, right. <laughs> I'm probably right. Well, that's our like the basic presentation. And before, um, if you guys have questions online, feel free to message me. Um, but I want to take just a couple minutes and let you guys know about a Chakra Mastermind program that I'm currently offering. And, um, and then we'll close for today. So the Chakra Mastermind program is a seven week program where we go through each week studying the chakra. And so in that study, there's a one hour presentation on one chakra. So yes, I can talk about each one of these for much longer um, and get really into the nitty gritty, but that was the overall view of the chakras and really the emotional and physical component of it. And so the chakra mastermind, each week we're looking at one chakra. So for example, this last week was heart chakra and we had the heart chakra webinar replay. We had heart chakra guided meditation. So you're taking this information and going, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to heal some of this. I understand now intellectually from the webinar and now I'm moving into my heart and saying, what are my healthy relationships and what are, are what are not and how can I heal them? And so we're doing some of the work through a guided meditation and I do a very shamanic journey. So you can listen to it over and over and over again. And the heart chakra one specifically looks at all of our attachments, all of our cords from other individuals. Are those healthy? Are they from trauma that need to be released? Like I no longer need to be giving that person energy or that person no longer can suck energy out of me. And so really being aware of our relationships. And so it's a guided meditation that you can go through numerous times as well as exercises. So each week there's a webinar um, on that chakra, the replay, guided meditations and exercises. And then you get a, a coaching call. Every Sunday we're doing the coaching call. It might shift to a different day once summer comes and everyone's busy. And then we have guest speakers. So um, we had Margot Darling last week who is a uh, conscious uncoupling coach and divorce coach. And she really looks at how astrology affects our our relationships and that's really like her thing she loves loves looking at that so we'll have guest speakers on every week depending on different chakras and because it's a seven week ongoing continuous program you you get into the program you do the do it for seven weeks and that starts over so we go from root to crown and then at crown we start again at root chakra and so all of those guest speakers they get archived so that you can watch them so if you uh, get to root chakra there might be two or three guest speakers already there that you can watch through. And so it just keeps on going. So I'm hoping to do this for at least a year, this online program. And I love the, the group because you can always get this new flavor of different people's energy and everyone's ready to learn. And it's a nice small group right now, but it's ready to grow because we're coming to root chakra here soon again, but you can come in at any point. So if you're interested, I have the application so you can just click that button and then fill out the application and set up a call with me to do a little um, 40 minute call or less. And we can see if that's the right fit for you. Sometimes it's, that's not the right fit and it might be, you need personalized coaching or Reiki sessions or whatever it might be. So if 
this doesn't feel like the right thing and you want to talk about it, feel free to still fill out the application and then we'll, we'll get together and, and touch base on what's going to be the right program for you. But thanks everyone for watching. And once again, if you have questions, reach out. Take care.